Welcome to Institute of Quality and Reliability. Hi, this is Heyman. Goodness of Fit Tests Goodness of Fit Tests We frequently use normal or other distributions to model and analyze our data. Probability plotting is a commonly used technique to assess how well our data fits a particular distribution. Watch our videos on normal and viable probability plotting to understand more about this technique. Links to both the videos are mentioned in the description of this video. If the data does not fit well on the selected distribution, our conclusions could be incorrect and misleading. It is therefore desirable to validate whether the distribution is a reasonable fit on our data. Goodness of fit tests are therefore used to assess how well the observed data fits a particular distribution. We want to compare observed frequency distribution with corresponding values of expected frequencies. Most of these tests use chi-square distribution. Procedure for performing goodness of fit tests is explained in this video with an example illustration. Goodness of fit tests are hypothesis tests. We recommend viewers to watch our videos on hypothesis test basic concepts and chi-square distribution if they are not already familiar with these concepts. Links are provided in the description of this video. Goodness of fit tests are hypothesis tests. The null and alternate hypothesis are H0 data follow a specified distribution. This is the null hypothesis and the alternate hypothesis H1 data does not follow the specified distribution. Let us see an application example for goodness of fit for normal distribution. Scores of 50 students in an examination are listed in the table shown here. Use goodness of fit test and conclude whether the scores are normally distributed. Confidence level is 95%. We can easily determine the mean as 68.42 and standard deviation as 10.414 by arranging the data in Microsoft Excel. The null and alternate hypothesis are edge not population scores are normally distributed with mean 68.42 and standard deviation 10.414. H1, population scores are not normally distributed with mean 68.42 and standard deviation 10.414. It is customary to perform normal probability plotting before actually performing the goodness of fit test. So we can do that on this website which is stats.blue so i will copy the data of scores of students from the excel file so i will select the data of the scores of 50 students and i will go back to the website stats.blue normal probability plotting and just paste it and i will click calculate and the moment i say calculate I can see that most of the points are quite close to the straight line. There are few 1, 2 and 3 points which are little away. But the correlation coefficient also has been given that is equal to 0 0.9808 which is a good correlation coefficient indicating that the data may be normally distributed. To perform the chi-square goodness of fit test, we divide the total area of normal distribution which equals 1 into 10 equal parts of equal probability 0 
this is required to calculate the expected frequency values. So the first slice will be from minus infinity to a point, let us say point B1. The area will be equal to point 1. The second slice will be from B1 to B2 with the same probability point 1, but the cumulative will be now point 2. The third slice will be from B2 to B3 with point 1 probability cumulative equal to point 3 and so on from B3 to B4 will be point 1 and cumulative point 4, B4 to B5 point 1 cumulative point 5, from B5 to B6 cumulative point 6, from B6 to B7 cumulative will be point 7, from B7 to B8 cumulative will be point 8, from B8 to B9 cumulative will be point 9 and the last slice B9 to plus infinity will be cumulative 1 and remember the area of each slice is equal to point 1 that is the equal probability. We need to calculate the values of B1, B2, B3, B4, B5, B6, B7, B8 and B9 using the either the normal distribution tables or Microsoft Excel. We will use and illustrate these calculations on Microsoft Excel. To perform the calculations for the goodness of fit analysis, we tabulate mean as 68.42 and standard deviation as 10.414. These are calculated from the data itself. Now it is recommended that the data should be divided into sufficient number of classes with equal probability. While doing this, it is also recommended that at least 5 expected values exist in each class. We need to check for this later. To follow these recommendations, the data is divided into 10 classes with equal probability of 0.1. You can see that each interval has got probability of 0.1 and therefore the cumulative probability of the first interval will be 0 to 0.1 that is 0 0.1. 0 0.1 gets added for the next interval so it is 0 0.2 then 0 0.3 etc up to 1. The class interval limits are calculated using excel function norm.inv. Since we are trying to fit the data into normal distribution, we will start with minus infinity. And for the first two value, we will use the cumulative probability of 0.1, mean of 68.42 and standard deviation 10.414. Of course, the mean and standard deviation values will be same for all the class intervals. So for the first two value, I type in norm.inv function. The probability is the cumulative probability, which is the cell H6. I put a comma. The mean is 68.42, but I use function F4 so that the same value is used in all other cells. And then I select the standard deviation 10.414 again function F4 so that the same value is used in all copied cells. So the first it class interval is from minus infinity to 55.074. So the probability between this interval will be 0.1. The next class interval we will add 0.1 to the first 0.1 cumulative probability so it will be 0.2. I can copy of course this formula for all 10 cells and the from value will be the next the next class interval the second class interval will start from 55.074 the third one will start from 59.655 and so on so I can copy this formula and the last one which says not defined will be actually plus infinity because the right side of the normal distribution is plus infinity. So I'll just type in plus infinity. These calculated bin values are shown in the figure. Now let us calculate the expected frequency. 
expected frequency for each class will be 50 into 0.1 because 50 is the number of data points and 0.1 is the interval probability. So we'll say expected frequency equal to 50 star interval probability and we can copy this formula so that for each class it will be 5. We have already calculated the expected frequencies for each class interval. Before that we have also calculated the class intervals. Now I will copy the class interval values to calculate the observed frequency. I will do that in another sheet. In a column called bin, I will say paste special because I want to copy the values and not the formulae. So these are the values for which I want the frequencies. That means from minus infinity to 55.07, we will get the frequency over here. Now these are the values of the scores, that is the data, which I can show you. So these are the 50 values of the data and this is the bin and now I will use the, the data command and data analysis. To see this command we need to install analysis tool pack by clicking file, options, add-ins and click on analysis tool pack and click go and then check the boxes and click OK. In the data analysis, I use the command histogram. Yes, the histogram command. In the input range, I select the scores and in the bin range, I select the bin and I must check the labels box. Yeah, the output range I can specify in this sheet only. Either somewhere here, whatever you can select. You can also select new sheet. You don't need the chart output over here. So I'll just say OK. With this, I get the frequencies for each bin or between each bin. So I just mark the bin and the frequency here, the bin and frequency is here. I can make these values up to two decimals. As per the procedure recommended, while doing this, it is recommended that at least five expected values exist in each class. Now here is the table of bin and frequency. It is recommended that each bin must have at least five counts but as you can see, there are two cells with counts less than five. One is 68.42 and the other one is 73.88. Now in this case, we can combine this two bins. So we combine 68.42 and 71.06 as one cell. So I mark this. And we also combine the 73.88 and 77.18. Another cell, I'll just mark it with another color for identification. If we combine, uh, this count will be 2 plus 7, that is 7. And the other count also will be 7. So we now revise the bin and frequency table like this. So this class interval is 71.06 it should be 71.06 68.42 will go and the next one is 77.18 yeah 73.88 also will go and this will remain because it has got five counts and more means yeah it's more than or if we can write greater than 81. 77 up to plus infinity and this actually means less than yeah i can write this less than 55.07 55.07 so up to minus infinity of course we have seen that so i have created the bin versus frequency table which is modified 
to make sure that all the frequency values are more than 5. I am just revising the original table which we had created, this one, with this combined class intervals and now the table looks like this and the observed frequencies are combined as per the this table which ensures that all observed values are more than 5. And expected values are also revised because when we combine the classes, the interval probability becomes 0 0.2 each and 15 to 0.2 would be 10 each. So the expected values for these two classes which are actually combined will be 10. Now we create the last column chi-square term which is equal to observed minus expected bracket square upon expected. So I will say equal to observed minus expected bracket square divided by expectant. So obviously the first term will be 0 because they are equal. Wherever you see observed and expected equal, the chi-square term will naturally be equal to 0. In some other cases it will have some value and we will have to take a total of this, the summation of all the chi-square terms. So that will be equal to summation of all the terms and here it is 4.6. So this is summation of the chi-squared values. This is calculated chi-square value. Now this is to be compared with the critical value of chi-square statistic. Now there are how many classes? We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 classes. As there are 8 class intervals, Basically, the degrees of freedom will be 8 minus 1, 7. But from the same data, we have calculated the mean and the standard deviation for normal distribution. And therefore, we lose another 2 degrees of freedom. So, total 8 minus 3, that will be 5 degrees of freedom. So, this chi-square statistic which is calculated as 4.6 is to be compared with the critical value of chi-square statistic at 95% confidence with 5 degrees of freedom. So I can say chi-square calculated. Okay, I need to put it here. And the second one will be chi-square critical or table value. But we can use Excel also. So that will be equal to CHI. Yeah, chi-square inverse right tail. This is always a right tail because always this O minus E bracket square upon E summation of all the chi-square terms will always be inflated if there are large differences. So I use the chi-square inverse right tail. Probability is 0 0.05. 0 0.05 is the alpha risk at 95% confidence level. Degrees of freedom will be 5, 8 minus 2 minus 1 or 8 minus 3. So this gives me a value of 11.07. Since the calculated value of chi-square statistic is lower than this, we cannot reject the null hypothesis. Unless this calculated value exceeds the critical value of chi-square statistic, we cannot reject. And since we are not able to reject this, we go with the null hypothesis that is this can be considered as normally distributed. Let us do a quick recap. Goodness of fit tests are conducted to assess how well our data fits a particular distribution. In this video, we have explained with an illustration how to perform chi-square test for goodness of fit using Microsoft Excel. Thanks for watching this video. Hope you found it worth watching. Please subscribe to Institute of Quality and Reliability channel if you want to watch more videos on reliability engineering, Six Sigma and statistical quality control. Thank you.